The MCAT Cars Podcast, session number 17. The car section of the MCAT gives thousands of pre-meds nightmares every night. Whether you're an ESL student, lack confidence while reading, or a slow reader like me, Jack Weston and the medical school headquarters are here to help you score higher in every section so you can be confident you are ready to get the MCAT score of your dreams. Welcome back to the MCAT Cars podcast. I am glad you are here today, taking some time to better prepare yourself for the MCAT Cars section and the MCAT as a whole. If you are interested in more MCAT Cars prep, go check out medicalschoolhq.net slash Jack Weston, which will activate a $100 off promo code to save on your MCAT cars course at jackweston.com. If you've been listening to this for a while, you know that Jack Weston is probably the best cars tutor out there. And his program and his course, if you are struggling with the car section or if you want a good solid foundation for how to better analyze and read and comprehend everything that you're gonna see on the MCAT, his course is something that you should look into. Again, medicalschoolhq.net slash Jack Weston will activate a $100 off coupon for you. And using that will give me a little bit of beer money as well. So you you save, I get a little money, and you learn here for free on the podcast. This week, we have a great article talking about the great digitization event. Welcome back, Jack Weston, to the MCAT Cars podcast. I want to know, are you now a vegan? <laughs> Uh, I can't say, I am, oh, no, but maybe right. in the future, all right. who knows that, but maybe if we read more articles on, on it, you, it might change my perspective. All right. But, but now there's going to be a selection bias. Cause you're the one that picks the articles. You're like, I'm not going to pick any more <laughs> vegan articles. So, so maybe if, I should just pick a lot of meat eating articles. Yes. So it can yes. Feel better. Uh, if you aren't aware of what we're talking about, you need to go back and listen to last week's episode where we discussed an article that was arguing that our meat eating, uh, ways are killing our planet. So. <laughs> Go enjoy that. Go enjoy all of the podcasts that we do over at the MCAT Cars podcast. If you want to follow along with our article today, just uh, swipe over in the podcast app you are using, and there should be a link to the article. If not, go to MCAT Cars podcast, find the episode for today, and the blog post will have a link and all of the text there as well. So today we have another great Wired article. Again, Wired is a a fun magazine that I like, and uh, we'll dive in now. Somewhere between two and three billion years ago, what scientists call the Great Oxidation Event, or GOE, took place, causing the mass extinction of anaerobic bacteria, the dominant life form at the time. Right, so the author is, is starting off painting a picture saying, hey, a couple billion years ago, we had this oxidation event. And and I'm assuming if you don't know what oxidation event means or oxidation means, that's okay. We'll keep reading, try to figure it out. But that it took place and anaerobic bacteria died off. There's a mass extinction. So anaerobic, again, another big defining word that may or may not be known at the time. Right. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of Pre-meds probably know what. Hopefully. (laughs) But if they don't, it's okay. We'll we'll learn. A new type of bacteria, cyanobacteria, had emerged. And it had the photosynthetic ability to produce glucose and oxygen out of carbon dioxide and water using the power of the sun. So the author is, is again, giving us this little history lesson that there's this new bacteria and what it's able to do with the, the sun. And does it seem to use oxygen or no? It makes oxygen. All right. It makes oxygen. Okay. Sounds good. Oxygen was toxic to many anaerobic cousins, and most of them died off. So again, kind of explaining the oxidation event and why all the anaerobic anaerobic bacteria died off, they're saying, hey, oxygen was toxic to them. Okay. In addition to being a massive extinction event, the oxygenation of the planet kicked off the evolution of multicellular organisms 620 to 550 million years ago. The Cambrian explosion of new species 540 million years ago and an ice age that triggered the end of the dinosaurs and many cold-blooded species, leading to the emergence of the mammals as the apex group 
66 million years ago, and eventually resulting in the appearance of Homo sapiens with all of their social sophistication and complexity 350,000 years ago. So the, the author is, again, giving us this history lesson of everything that happened after the oxygenation event. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Are we reading an uh, article, like a <laughs> potential MCAT passage, or are we reading a textbook or something, right? Yeah. Like, that's probably what most students are thinking right now. This could happen, right? You could be educated on something. And I, don't, I, I think this is pretty interesting. You know, they, they basically explain human history and, uh, and evolution of the earth and what, you know, the, the organisms that were on it in one paragraph. So props to the author. Okay, sounds good. So we know the oxidation event and all the things that came about because of it. Let's go ahead. I've been thinking about the GOE, the Cambrian explosion, and the emergence of the mammals a lot lately because I'm pretty sure we're in the midst of a similarly disruptive and pivotal moment in history that I'm calling the Great Digitization Event, or GDE. So the author is, is saying, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about all this stuff lately because we're going through something similar, this digitization event. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, they make up their own event, yeah. right? Out of, based on GOE, right? So, yeah. and wh what do we know about the Cambrian explosion? What kind of, I mean, they kind of say it, the emergence of mammals. So what do you think is, I mean, we don't want to guess too much, but what do you think the digitization event actually means? Like, what do you think they're referring to there? Uh, like, just the internet and how everything is digital and knowledge yeah. is digital and all this stuff. Probably, right? Like maybe some kind of evolution of, of digital stuff. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And right now we're in that period where the oxygen, or in this case, the internet, as used today, is rapidly and indifferently killing off many systems while allowing new types of organizations to emerge. So they're, they're saying, yeah, the internet is here, and what it's doing is killing off other things that we don't need anymore because we have the internet, and so he's liking that to like the dinosaurs going away and other stuff going away. Yeah. It's just an analogy, right? Yep. Analogy to our previous, you know, Earth history. Okay, keep going. As Wired celebrates its 25th anniversary, the whole Earth catalog, its 50th anniversary, and the Bauhaus, its 100th anniversary, we're in a modern Cambrian era, sorting through an explosion of technologies enabled by the internet that are the equivalent of the stunning evolutionary diversity that emerged some 500 million years ago. Um, so that they're just giving more examples of, of why this, this person thinks we're going through another event and kind of comparing it back through the Cambrian area, saying it's a modern Cambrian area of all these new technologies. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, first part of that sentence was hard to understand. They're bringing up anniversaries of different magazines, right? But how important is that? Probably not so much as long as you realize the internet is doing some kind of change, all right? Just as in the great oxidation event in which early organisms that created the conditions for the explosion of diversity had to die out or find a new home in the mud on the ocean floor, the early cohort that set off the digital explosion is giving way to a new, more robust form of life. So again, more comparisons of what happened before is happening now, just obviously in a different way. Okay. As Fred Turner describes in From Counterculture to Cyberculture, we can trace all of this back to the hippies in the 1960s and 1970s in San Francisco. And so we're given a, a name here, Fred Turner. And Fred Turner, it looks like, wrote a book or something and is saying, hey, this is can be traced back to the 60s and 70s in San Francisco. So maybe some, some interesting knowledge for a question. Mm -hmm. They were the evolutionary precursor to the advanced life forms observable in the aftermath at Stoneman Douglas High School. So uh, they, I, I'm assuming that is the hippies from the 60s and 70s, are the evolutionary precursor to the advanced life forms observable in the aftermath. So Stoneman Douglas High School, you'd have to know kind of what, what Stoneman Douglas High School is. This is a high school in Florida that had a shooting in 2018. So 
the life forms ob- observable in the aftermath. I'm assuming the writer is talking about all of the kids that started advocating for gun rights and stuff like that, or gun gun control. Yeah, so it's not clear, yeah. right? And you need to know a lot of background information on Stoneman Douglas High School. I, I find it very odd that they even bring this up. Yeah. It, you know, unless they explain it further, I don't expect you to know anything about this high school, right? right? And I, I would try not to bring in any bias, but your thought process was really strong. So, I mean, good, you know, that's great, but you don't have to go that far. We don't know enough, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let me give you a firsthand account of how the hippies set off the great digitization event. All right, so now the, the author is going to dive in and hopefully explain some of this to us. So... The big picture here is what? Like, what should you really know after reading this paragraph? Uh, We should know that the hippies caused this, apparently, according to the author, this great digitization event. Right. So the hippie culture is potentially leading to the internet, right? The internet kill off and fostering. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, if you really want to know what they were saying about the Stoneman Douglas High School, I think what they're trying to say is that we evolved from hippies to these high school kids. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know exactly what they mean by these high school kids, but that's what they're kind of trying to say. So yeah, go ahead. From the outset, members of that movement embraced nascent technological change. So members of that movement, I'm I'm assuming the author is saying that the hippie movement um, embraced nascent technological change. So nascent... You have to kind of know what that means. I, I think it means like new, new technological change. Yeah, but even if you didn't know that word meant, you could still get it because you know there's technological change. Yeah. So it's, it's a descriptor that doesn't really matter. Stuart Brand, one of the Merry Pranksters, began publishing the Whole Earth Catalog in 1968, which spawned a collection of other publications that promoted a vision of society that was ecologically sound and socially just. So we're given a name, Stuart Brand, who published the whole Earth Catalog in the 60s, 1968, and how that spawned other collections. And again, talking about ecologically sound and socially just society, a vision of society. So basically, definition of hippie, right? Of these, uh, yeah. Yeah, of socially just and ec- ecologically sound. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So what what are they saying about that though? Like what are they, what are they trying to make you make you understand based on that? Um I don't know. So they're essentially trying to say that maybe the soundness and social just is something that led to this internet, right? They haven't said it yet. They haven't really brought it up, but why else would they bring up the fact about a society being eco- ecologically sound and socially just. So maybe they're using something about the internet to help us here, mm-hmm. but go ahead. Yeah, okay. The Whole Earth Catalog gave birth to one of the first online communities, the Whole Earth Electronic Link, or WELL, in 1985. So again, leading to this Whole Earth Catalog, which is tied to the hippies and how that was one of the first online communities. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that clears it up. So great. Yeah, exactly. So why would, you know, they're trying to say that these hippies did some kind of technological technological change, maybe had something to do with being socially just or sound, but essentially it led to this internet online community. Great. Yeah. Around that time, Are You Serious <laughs> and Mark Frost started the magazine High Frontiers, which was later relaunched with Queen Mew and others as Mondo 2000. All right, so we're given some more names. Uh, Queen Mew, Mark Frost, and Are You Serious? The initials are you and then serious. That's a great, <laughs> yeah. na- great name. And so they are talking about another magazine and then uh, turning it into Mondo 2000. We don't know the importance of that yet. Yeah, probably not important at all. Just filler. Yep. Okay. The magazine helped legitimize the burgeoning cyberpunk movement, which imbued the growing community of personal computer users and participants in online communities with an 80s version of hippie sensibilities and values. All right, so again, tying together the hippies and our digital movement of how how that happened. 
Great. Yeah. So this hippie kind of online community kind of sparked a movement in some ways and maybe got more people on the on the internet. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Okay. A new wave of science fiction represented by William Gibson's Neuromancer added the punk rock dystopian edge. All right. So another another person, Neuromancer and William Gibson's William Gibson's Neuromancer talking about punk rock dystopian edge for science okay. fiction. Interesting. Great. So what is the big picture of this entire passage? Like, what are they trying to say? What, are, what do they want you to know? Um, so it sounds like they want us to know that, yeah, we're, we're going through this digitization event, but really the, it sounds like the author wants us to make, make sure that we know the roots and that it started with the hippies in the sixties and seventies. That's excellent. Yeah, that's it. So they started off the passage with this idea of how evolution occurs, right, through change. And this change causes new organisms and new life forms to develop. And then they brought that as an, you know, as an analogy to today's culture and to what's happening today with the digital scene. And then they give us the specifics. How is that happening? Well, it's happening through hippies, right? That's their argument. Their argument or their idea is that hippies helped change the way that we interact with society and the way that we look at technology, right? It, it's adapting for that for that reason, right? It's, it, mm-hmm. The internet came about because of them. So we're kind of in a moment in, in digital evolution where old technology is kind of dying to give way to new and better technology due to hippies, right? That's kind of their point. All right. Awesome. All right, so there you have it, the great digitization event. Say that 10 times fast. Hopefully this podcast was helpful for you, helping you understand, again, breaking down sentences, breaking down what the author is trying to tell you. That is what the MCAT is all about. Whether it's the car section and reading what the author is trying to tell you, or any of the other passages in the science sections or even psych breaking down what the test writer is trying to tell you. Don't forget, go check out medicalschoolhq.net slash Jack Weston to activate that $100 off coupon. Again, that's an affiliate link, so I'll make a little commission on that on that coupon code. So you save, I win, and you get free prep here on the MCAT Cars Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the MCAT Cars Podcast. Cars <laughs> Podcast.